everyone. It's Farmsome Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to Bally Spring. It feels like we've not been here for a while, actually. And because of that, the jobs have started to stack up a bit. So let me run through a few things that I'm thinking about doing. First and foremost, not overly confident about the amount of money we have in the bank. And we don't really have much to get rid of as well. Yes, we've got a little bit of wheat sitting in the silos that we can sell in a little bit during the winter. But other than that, we don't really have much in the way of income. Now, we've got a bit of milk here, but not much. But what we do have, which we inherited when we moved into the farm, are some Angus cattle. Now, if we'd bought them direct, they would have been 1,500 euros. Now they're worth 2,500 euros. So even with the fee taken off, 2,400 euros is a nice bit of profit. So I think we're going to sell them. Maybe we'll buy a few more. Um, maybe we'll buy some calves. Uh, but what I might do is reinvest some of that money into some heifers, some uh, milk-producing heifers, and see if we can uh, start to bolster those a little bit and make a little bit more milk, because milk is a pretty lucrative one. On top of that, I'm going to merge a few fields together. So let me just jump into the map here and I'll show you what our plan is. So up at the top here, where are other farmers? Field 38 there. We are going to put cover crop in that. Some whole seed radish through the winter. It'll help us with a bit of natural fertilizer. But I'm actually going to merge field 74 and 72 together. Now there's a fence running down here. I would have merged eight as well, but there's a fence running down here. So we're going to leave that one for now. But 74 and 72 are going to merge together. And again, we're going to put cover crop in those. Some more um, oilseed radish in there bit of natural fertilizer through the winter will be good. Um, but also, field 159 up here and field 15 down here are ready to harvest again with grass. So we're going to cut those, we're going to get those into the silage shed, and then we're going to finally cover that silage, which has been sitting there for a few weeks now, uncovered. So first things first, those fields are actually ploughed, um, but we will need to cut down the bits in between the fields to make them work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the guttler here, which is our cedar for the cover crop. I'm going to run it up there with the 7810. The TW15 is up at the other farm. So we'll go and get that and get that on standby with the plow. But between the two of them, it shouldn't take us too long to do. I will put some seed in this before we head up to the other farm with it though. Get that sorted. Um, we also have a few bales still sitting on field 15, which is ready to harvest again. So at some point I might just run up there with a 7610 and uh, we'll go and uh, pick up the last of those wrapped bales. So we do have quite a lot of silage. We need to... Uh, I know we need some for, for feed for the cattle, but I'm questioning whether or not we need it all. I still think everything we're going to put in the bunker can be sold. And whatever's left we can use for uh, the cattle. Anyway, here's field 38. This, actually, is one stage away from being harvested as well. So I'm not going to put cover crop in that yet. I think we'll cut that one more time first. Um, so we'll go down to the other field. But what we'll do, we'll bring it into the yard here first because we need to get some heavy equipment in, get rid of the hedges, cut down a couple of trees, and uh, then we'll plough in between the two fields and make it into one big field. Now here is the TW, I was about to wash this, but if we're going to take the plough again, there's not much point in that, so let's get it hooked up to the plough, let's get it over to the fields, and then we'll start to do that little bit of work before we uh, plough the two fields together. Here we go, I could have folded the plough into its transport mode, but I just thought as we're nipping just a little bit along the road here, I didn't really need to... And there are the fields, already ploughed, of course we've done those already. But, uh, as you can see, there's two quite big trees in here, I think we need to get rid of. So we've got lumberjacks coming to take those away, we don't need to worry about those too much. But the hedges, and the removal of these gates that actually, in fact, we put in not too long ago, that's down to us. So, we'll probably go into a little quick time lapse here, pick off these hedges, get rid of those gates, and get those trees chopped down as well. So, we will be back shortly.
So there we go. The lumberjacks have been removed the trees. We've got rid of all of the hedges. So let's join these two fields together. Go. I think this might just be the biggest field in Bally Spring now. Other than this little bit of tree that the lumberjacks left behind, which is quite big, and got stuck under the tractor while we were ploughing, we are sorted. So, there we go. Drop that off, and we'll go and dump the plough and get the cedar. Right, this has earned this wash. We have done some serious work with this over the last couple of episodes. We're actually going to do a bit more with it. I've just thought while we're seeding this field that we've just cut into one big field, we've got a couple of grass fields that we need to cut as well. So um, we're going to take the TW up there, get them running those fields, and uh, they'll be ready to uh, windrow. Right, that's us with the mower on. So. Let's run up here, down this little path, down the side of this field here, which again is another candidate for cover crop. Let me just jump in the crop calendar here when I talk about cover crop. So, um, of course, we can plant wheat, barley, canola and oats at the moment, uh, but for something like corn, we'll want to plant that April, May time. So if we put a cover crop in now, we could put some corn into that field, the big field, and maybe even this one here next to us. We just talked about there and uh, they will bring us a rather large silage harvest later in the year so um, it also means that we're not putting um, chemicals on the field we're going to do it naturally so we'll give it a go if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't this soil is not great on this map um, very heavy clay soil so as you can see our uh, soil information is pretty low at the moment we're in the kind of 80 75 percent category for these fields so we're never going to get huge yields off them so something like corn that will give us uh, quite a high return might be the best solution here or even potatoes i've said it before i'll say it again potatoes could be an option right this is a lovely grass field here and it has got seeded grass in it rather than the long grass it might yield a little bit better so let's find out anyway Right, all set on course play. Let's hit the button and see what happens. Now, I'll say it again, I know this is not the right kind of mower, but it works for me in terms of it's uh, being able to be pulled behind the tractor pretty easily, and we don't use any yield with it. Luckily enough, the game isn't clever enough to identify between a flail mower and a normal mower so we're not going to lose any yield from it and it just means I can have a mower running comfortably and I don't need to worry about it from the context of it being uh, looked after by the course play driver or the hired help and I can go off and do something else confident that when I come back there will be a cut field of grass ready for us so um, all is looking rosy here it looks like so we will leave him to it and we will head over and get stuck into another field. My only issue here is it looks like it's pretty low on fuel so we may need to uh, bring some fuel up here bring a couple of cans of fuel up and load them up again. Right, great stuff. We are back at the farm. Let's get this fired up. We've already selected oilseed radish as our crop to plant so let's go and get it done.
Well, folks, there we go. We are just finishing the field. There we go. Nicely done. And look at that. 30% left of the seed in the uh, tank there, which is not bad because it's only a 300 litre tank. So putting oilseed radish down is cost effective. No question about that. Right. Let's run this back to the farm though. Now, before we put another layer of cover crop in one of the other fields, which I think I might do in the one up at the top of the hill here, we are going to go and get the wind rower and we're going to get started because I'm sure the mower will have finished in the other field by now. So we'll go and get that sorted and we'll head on up there. I'm going to pick this up in a different way again to what we've done in the past. I'm not going to use a forage harvester this time. We have got a pool behind one which has been sitting in the shed, so we're going to take advantage of that. And yes, indeed, here we are. The field is ready. We're running the TW back to the yard to pick up the forage harvester. Right, here is the harvester that we're going to use. Now, it does need 130 horsepower to run it. And as the 7810 is only 136, we're going to put him onto the windrow instead. And we'll work the two in tandem like that. Right, here we are. Hopefully this shouldn't take too long. And what we're actually going to do, we should be able to follow behind it relatively quickly because uh, we're going to tow the trailer behind the forage wagon this time, or behind the forage harvester, and uh, just drop the trailer off every time it's full because I don't think there's going to be that much grass in here. Famous last words, but uh, we shall see. So, yes, we'll use a TW15 with the forage harvester in the middle and we'll tow the trailer behind. We'll maybe use a 7, 8, 10 to drag the trailer back to the farm when he's finished the windrow, but in between we'll use the TW. Well, let's see how it goes anyway. We'll give it a bash, shall we? We'll get this fired up and running, and we'll go and get the other tractor. So there he goes. He's off and running. Looking good already. And at that speed, 11 miles an hour, I don't think it's going to take that long. So... I think if we go and get the forage harvester and the trailer now, we could dive straight into this and almost follow behind him straight away. So, that is what we're going to do. Here we go, all hooked up, ready to go. Let's just grab one of the trailers from down here. And the only thing might be the challenge of getting to the field with narrow lanes, but... You know what? Give it a go. Worst case scenario. Just need to bring the two of them down separately, but I think we should be all right. As long as we're sensible, I think we should be all right. Right, discovered a problem. It's got a very high hitch on it, which does not work with these cane trailers. So, I'm going to go for plan two. I'm going to drop that off. I'm going to run this down to the field. And we're going to use 7810 as soon as he's finished windrowing. So it's going to take a bit longer, but... It will work better. Alright, let's get him in a spot where he's not going to interfere with the windrow that's just about to come around the corner. There we go. It will unfold. Again, offset machinery never tends to play nicely with course play, so I think what we'll do is we'll just drive this manually. another change of plan after watching actually how long it's probably going to take 7, 8, 10 to get that work done I am going to drop off the blade here with this tractor we're going to whip the double wheels off quickly and this little beast is going to run our trailer for us and why not it's probably the most powerful tractor we've got right let's get it sorted shall we right all sorted we could have gone for wider tyres, but that would cost us money, whereas that was a straight takeoff of the rear wheels. So let's grab this trailer and let's see how we get on. Right. Well, Windrow has finished his work. I'm going to just park him here, hopefully. Just keep him out of the way for a second. And I am going to attempt something that I wasn't going to try but I'm now going to give it a go um, in fact 
No, I was going to copy the course, but I'll just load it in. So we're going to use that window of course, but as you can see, this is offset. So what I'm going to do is jump in here, we'll load up the course, we'll offset it slightly and just see how we go. I'm not confident. Never have much luck with offset courses, but we'll see what we get away with. What I'll do is I'll set him to here. I'll go and get our trailer. Now, ideally, we'd be going anti-clockwise because of the way the trailer's shaped, but I'm kind of hoping the pipe from the uh, from the forage harvester will find the trailer anywhere. anyway, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so this looks interesting. We might be able to manage this. First headland is always a pain. But after that, we might be alright. We're running roughly six miles an hour here. And so far, so good. Oh, it does look like he does not stop. That's the other thing. So when this is full, we're going to have to jump out and stop course play. Which is a bit frustrating. Ideally, you'd want him to stop, but... Uh, hey, beggars can't be choosers. We've got an offset vehicle working with course play. That never happens. Okay, we are about to hit full. And then I'm going to have to rapidly jump out. Stop the forage harvester. So what I'm thinking I might do is set up auto drive. There we go, 98%. I'm going to jump out here. And I'm going to stop this guy. And we, I think, will drive this from now on in. Right, auto drive course set up. I just need to switch this to Eel 159, I hope. And we might see some action. We also might not. So ultimately, that was a failed experiment. It does not recognise the forage harvester as a forage harvester or a combine, so it wasn't able to uh, call the uh, trailer over. So we've gone back to course plate with me driving the trailer, which, although it's a pain we have to stop the uh, forage harvester, is working for us, so I am not going to complain. Well, there we go, another trailer full. Things are looking good. So, on that note, I think we'll leave it for this episode. And we'll push on with this grass silage. And uh, we will see you again very, very soon. But thank you all for watching. Nice to be back on Bally Spring. And I'll see you all again very soon. Take care. Bye for now.